Todd and Mary, the fire has been burning for the past hour and a half. You can see behind me, this home looks like it's a complete loss. He was playing with his friends down there when he went down the water. Very swift moving water here. If you've been in Idaho Falls at all today, smoke has just blanketed the air all across the valley. Apparently this car was coming south when another car coming north smashed right into it. So because these guys grabbed their tractors and started hauling dirt, it saved some homes. Oh yes, definitely. David Kaneko lived with his dead wife and daughters for years after they had starved themselves to death. I was in court, as was Teresa. Teresa Priola today. Teresa, the prosecutor says it's the most bizarre case the county's seen and probably the state. Targeting vehicles with unlocked doors. He'd get inside them and then he would take things like iPods. People say that you do predatory practices. Do you have anything to say to that? Can you shut your camera off for a second? He'd often go at night. He'd go into the laundry room and see if anybody was in there. If the room was empty, he'd walk over to the dryer. That's when police say he would allegedly take the women's underwear. Instead of serving pizza and hamburgers, these lunch ladies are going to be served a good time on a cruise. This room right here is at least double the size of your average suite. Free activities, free food, and of course a little obstacle course right here. Uh, one of the boys over here, Jake, thought that he could uh, take me on here. So, Jake, are you ready to go through this with me? Nate Eaton joins us with more on this story you'll only see on Channel 3. Nate, this is pretty hard to believe. Yeah, it is hard to believe, Danielle, and very sad. But I have learned that over the weekend, a 10-year-old girl did give birth to a baby girl. She's one of the youngest mothers in the country to ever have a baby. The Barbosa family has owned Bobby, their dog, for about five years. A few days ago, they were shocked when a deputy showed up and told them he was there to kill the dog. Earlier today, I met with this family in this Channel 3 exclusive. My heart was broken seeing an officer killing my dog. It's been a traumatic week for Bobby and his owners, the Barbosa family. A few days ago, a Teton County Sheriff deputy knocked on their door demanding to see the dog. He says, well, I'm here to put him down. I'm here. I'm here to kill him. The officer told Leo Barbosa there had been a complaint that Bobby had bitten someone. I said, do you have any proof? or anything, he says, I don't need any proof. So Leo got the dog while the deputy pulled out a rifle from his car. They walked a few feet from the Barbosa's home where Leo's wife and his three-year-old son were inside. This is where the officer was aiming at the dog. The dog was tied up on the post right there. The officer fired three shots, then the dog collapsed. Leo's son heard the gunshots and opened the front door. Meanwhile, a bunch of kids, uh, they just got off the bus and they were all all this right here on the street, all the kids were watching the officer shooting at the dog. The deputy then got in his vehicle and drove away, leaving the dog bleeding profusely from his head, almost dead. Came back inside with my wife and kid, you know, we were hugging each other, you know, crying about our dog. That night, Leo's father-in-law, who witnessed the whole thing, had a nervous breakdown and had to be hospitalized. When the family returned home from the hospital a few days later, they were shocked to see their dog alive. My wife called me, calls me out. She's like, hey, dog is alive. I was like, what? Are you serious? She says, yeah. I was happy. The Teton County Sheriff won't say much about this case, except that it's still under investigation. He also told me that there's been numerous complaints about the Barbosa's dog. But when I checked court records, I could only find one complaint filed last year, and that was dismissed. Did your dog ever bite anybody? Not to my knowledge. Well, no. And this was the first time you'd ever heard of any complaint? Yeah, this is the first time. Get ready to spend at least $10 on your lunch at your favorite fast food restaurant. That's what some local eatery owners say you're going to be paying if the economy does not improve. Time to brown bag it. Nate Eaton spent the day working on this story. Nate, that's a whole lot to pay for a quick bite to eat. You bet it is, Todd. If you're spending 5 or $6 now, then you soon may be paying double. And it's not just because of high gas prices. It's a lot of other reasons, too. We've been here about 53 years. Bob Jones has owned the Rexburg Arctic Circle for the past five years. Business has generally been good until recently. All the prices of our food products have increased tremendously. And it's not just food. Taxes have gone up in Rexburg. Businesses are having to pay fuel surcharges on deliveries. There's bonds to pay. And in three weeks, the federal minimum wage goes up, meaning employers will have to pay their workers more. The cumulative effect of all these things really it takes a hit on your bottom line. Nothing's gone down, everything has gone up. Just down the street at Crago's Pizza, owners are dealing with the same problem. In fact, the restaurant has changed the way it does business. We've had to change our style and go to more of a self-serve 
because we can't afford to have all those employees working. Crago's Pizza has been hit hardest with the price of cheese over the past year. Now on every pizza they put on about seven ounces of mozzarella cheese. Let me give you an example. Right here, that's about one ounce of cheese. Now that little bit alone right there, that's going to cost the restaurant 18 cents. A year ago, it was only 12 cents. And while it may not sound like a big jump, it makes a big difference. We have to look at our food costs every week and we have to adjust our prices accordingly. Good evening. Tonight's big story only on Channel 3. Some tense moments at the Rexburg LDS Temple as a man somehow gets on top of the roof and wanders around for several minutes. Nate Eaton was the only TV reporter on the scene. He joins us now from there. Nate, how'd this guy even get on the roof? Well, Mary, he found a doorway inside the temple that had a stairwell that led up to the roof of the temple. Obviously a very unusual sight to see somebody on a building this big, especially an LDS temple. People on the grounds and surrounding the building were wondering what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. This is what Landon Harrison saw as he stepped outside his apartment Thursday afternoon. I saw, I think, one or two guys up on the roof of the temple. Landon was on his way to the temple anyway to take some pictures, but when he saw the men on the roof, he didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe they're taking wedding photos or something like that. It wasn't until Landon saw numerous police cars surrounding the temple that he knew something wasn't right. We had several officers uh, on the scene immediately. The Rexburg Police Department called in its tact team and an officer went on the roof to talk to the man. At one point I saw him take his suit coat off, so that's why I thought they were taking pictures, because I thought maybe it was a tuxedo or something like that. After about 15 minutes, the officer was able to take the man into protective custody and things ended peacefully. As for Landon, he did end up snapping a few photos, but not ones he planned on taking. Not an everyday thing to see somebody on top of the temple. No, not unless there's construction going on, but obviously that's, that's normal, but not in a time like this. We are receiving word that there has been another collapse at the mine down in Huntington, Utah. Police have arrested a man they believe accidentally fired a semi-automatic assault rifle into a St. Anthony home during a fight. We're going to go live to Boise in a minute where we'll hear from Senator Craig on the bathroom sex scandal that broke yesterday. He was arrested back in June for lewd conduct in a men's restroom. Up in Rexburg, State Superintendent Tom Luna was on hand tonight to hear concerns about school safety in the Madison School District. Lack of manpower in Lava Hot Springs has the fire district scrambling to stay on top of inspections. Now now Bannock County wants to lessen the burden. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Sarah Swabby joins us from Pocatello. Sarah, what's their solution? It looks like something you'd probably want to have in your yard, but it's actually a noxious weed called a policeman's helmet. Adam, any sign of Senator Craig? I know there was talk he might be there, he might not. Was he there today? Tonight's a big night across eastern Idaho. The first games <laughs> are being played in a huge American tradition, high school football. Here's what it looks like on the outside. I'm going to hurry and cut it here. You can see oh, on wow. the inside. One of these toys could make your child sick. Do you know which one it is? This Polly Pocket jewelry maker is one of millions of toys being recalled tonight. Yeah, from lead scares to choking hazards, recent toy recalls by Mattel and Fisher Price have a lot of parents on edge. 